Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Kodash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. And Shalom to the 130 Yasharala, who are known today as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But before they lost their history, were known as the Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, I want to go ahead and get into the parable of the lamp under the bushel. This is the uh, parable that he had spoken, or was part of the parable, or the sermon that he had spoken when he had gone up into the mountain and the multitude had followed followed him. This is also part of the, the uh, part where he's telling us Israelites who had followed him that we were the salt of the earth. And he was explaining to us how we are special people. And in doing so, how we have a special place here on earth. And and he likened us onto a, a, a candle that shines and so that all can see within the household. So let me go ahead and read this. This is Matthew 5 and 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So there's that parable. And this particularly refers twofold. One, talking about the uniqueness and the uh, grandeur of, of his people, the Israelites, who are the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And second, talking about the light that are within these people, which is the truth of the Holy Bible, that is. The true words of the Lord, Yahweh, who is the true name of God. Now, just like he says here, we are the light that, uh, that shines throughout the world. And because we've lost our heritage and because we've lost this truth, that light went out for a while. Right? And the world is plunged into darkness. But now that the Lord is raising us up again, as he said he would in Hosea 1 and 10, where he would give us back our heritage so we would know that we were the Israelites, the truth is also coming back to light. And this light is shining on people. Some, this light is burning because it's to them it's death. And to others, it's, it's a, a quickening. Right? It's an awakening of their spirit, as it tells you in the scriptures, because it justifies a lot of the internal struggles that they had been feeling. Now, another thing that this parable touches upon is confessing the Lord to, to the world, right? Not hiding that light under a bushel, right? Not hiding the truth that you've been given, because you may be there in your in your room, you may... Uh, go through tons and tons of videos and articles and have what you believe is deep understanding which hey you may right there's a lot of uh, keyboard scholars out there but what good is it if nobody else learns from what you've learned right what good will it do if you keep it all to yourself it'll help you but just as the Lord gave the parable of the, of the, of the talents when he gave his when he gave his servants one talent and that servant did nothing with it but hide it and return that one talent onto the Lord he was mad he because he wanted a return on his investments he wanted a gaining of fruit so like it tells you here in Luke 21 and 14 it says settle settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye sh shall answer for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Now, that's going to happen when you start speaking from the Bible, talking about the truth, right? Because you go, 
you will run into a lot of people who believe they know what's going on, but all the points they make don't add up to the Bible. They're just hearsay, opinions, and theories, right? And a lot of people, because they can be deceived by a good presentation, something that has a high uh, uh, production value. You know, people see some of these high productive production videos and they're there uh, believing the, the lie, hook, line, and sinker, right? One perfect example is the uh, Genesis 6 giants of these alien race Nephilim that fell from heaven, mated with women, and, and created these demigods, right? But a lot of people don't even know that they could go, uh, that, they could, that that comes from the Book of Enoch. Right, which came out of the the, uh, the Helen the Hellenitic or the Hellenist uh, period or the Greek period, right? And that was due because they wanted to ultimately bury this truth, so they had it they had to uh, um, account the giants to be other people. Now, one thing in doing this truth, yes, you can make videos because there are some people out there, right? We refer to them as keyboard warriors, right? You, you don't go out, these people don't go out to the highways. They don't go and tell the average people. Basically, they're just part of the echo chamber online that just keeps repeating the same the same narratives, right? You know, these people never really get out. There's, there's, there's a few that do. There's a few that do make some very good quality videos. And they spread the truth. And, you know, they may go out on, on their own. They don't, you know, maybe they just don't. Don't record it, document it, but I, but ultimately that's what the Bible tells you, that you must go out to the uh, highways and hedges to preach the truth that you know. Now, for those few who uh, do go out to the highways and hedges, and not only preach the word but also do other works to help spread this word, right? They spread you spread it through uh, through images, through breaking down scriptures on online videos through uh, uh, finding uh, bits of, of, of knowledge within uh, books and bringing that out for edification, that's also work, right? Some people may call it, uh, you know, bit being busybody or whatnot, but it's all, it's all edifying to the body, ultimately. But one thing you, want, you don't want to do is you don't want to get hung up in that, right? Where that's all you do, right? You don't want to end up being a keyboard warrior. But uh, as it tells you here in 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, But thanks be to God which giveth us, us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai the Mashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For so much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now this word abounding, when you look it up, in the Greek, let's go to it real quick. It's G4052. Strong's G4052. Perisuo. Perisuo. Right? So here it is. It means to exceed a fixed number of measure, to be left over and above a certain number of measure, to be over, to remain. To exist or be at hand in abundance, right? So ultimately it means to do more, right? Do extra. Be that extra, right? So ultimately, when you're out there doing your works, ideally out preaching the word as it tells you to, but in anything else you do, right? If you want to create images, you want to spread the, this truth online, when you talk to people on the streets or even make comments it tells you here Luke 12 and 8 also I say unto you whosoever shall confess me before men him shall the son of man also confess before the angels of God so that's what you ultimately want to do right so some examples I'm sure some of you uh, who follow my, my channel know that I'm a graphic um, artist, 
and I make these these images like I'm making right here in this one this example of a recent image I made of the most high right our people are, are visual if you haven't noticed right our people don't, don't like to read but they love to look at, at at pretty things so if you could go ahead and you know make images to share to share the scriptures in visual form to help you know bring Jake into the truth to make this more paddle palatable to uh, to the masses right because uh, there was a there was a comment I got the other day on on a on an image that I shared of Yahawashai right this one Jake said that there's so many images why are there so many images of Yahawashai out there to which I replied that it's to it's to uh, catch most of the Jakes out there because not all all Jakes are going to vibe with every image of, of Yahawashai right some of them may see this image here and they may love the love it and, and this may be the images they like but you may have other uh, Jakes who don't, you know, appreciate the whole superhero, you know, Magneto-ish, you know, comic book style Yahawashai. They want a more refined, a more, you know, uh, majestic looking one. So, right, so that's why the Lord put it on the spirit of, uh, of Jakes to, to, uh, to make all these images, right? Because if it wasn't so, then it wouldn't be done. So again, just because you don't like something doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's bad. What it means is that it's just not meant to catch you, right? It may be to catch others who are meant to get this truth. So if you're, if you're out there but you, you just don't want to do the work because you don't think people are going to listen to what you're going to say or, or appreciate the work that you do, don't worry about what other men say. Just do the work of the Lord. Like as it tells you that um, in 1 Corinthians, it tells you, it says, Know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So as long as what you're doing is for this truth and to preach the truth of the Lord, it's not done in vain, brothers. So hopefully this video was edifying. Until the next time, Shalom.